For more debates, updates and bonus content, sign up at thebigconversation.show. If we are going to have humans going into space in future, then uh, they should go as an adventure. And this should be, I think, not paid for by the taxpayer, because if ta the taxpayers send civilians into space, they've got to be very risk averse. Whereas if the billionaires pay for it, then first of all, it's not our money in the same sense. But secondly, uh, they can launch the kind of uh, um, adventurers, people like Sir Ranulph Fiennes, or people who go hang gliding and all that, and uh, uh, even some people who will be willing to go with one-way tickets. In fact, Musk himself has said that he wants to die on Mars, but not on impact. He's now, I think, mm. 51, and uh, uh, when he's 90, maybe he could go, and uh, we should cheer <laughs> him on. You know? um, so um, I think um, robots, um, of course, can do all the exploration, and they can, of course, go far beyond Mars, where humans never could. Um, but um, the role of humans is nonetheless very interesting, um, because supposing that there, there is a small community of uh, these bold pioneers um, living on Mars, um, which would be less comfortable than living at the South Pole or the ocean bed, but there could be people there, um, then at the end of a century they will want to use all the techniques we will then have for um, genetic modification and cyborg to adapt their progeny to this very hostile environment, very different from the Earth. Now here on Earth we're pretty well adapted and also we are going to regulate all these techniques for ethical and the prudential reasons. But these guys on Mars are away from the regulators. And so uh, m my line in our book is that um, if there is going to be a sort of post-human species, it will be the progeny of those crazy pioneers on Mars uh, who will uh, have, have the incentive and uh, 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 not mm. the constraints which we would have on, on Earth. I suspect the drive for human enhancement uh, is going to be massive on this planet, not just on Mars. Um, and and uh, in many ways, what we're seeing already is a kind of low-tech human enhancement. I mean, you know, the idea of cosmetic surgery, uh, of, of gender-changing surgery, of uh, recreational pharmaceuticals, of, you know, this is all um, low-tech transhumanism. And, and what's going to happen? And it shows that there is a sort of inexhaustible appetite from, for us to improve our bodies. And, and I suspect that as the technology advances, there's going to be more and more demand for um, sophisticated technology to improve our bodies. And, and I think the question we're going to have to ask is, are we satisfied? I think there's going to be a campaign for real humanity. You know, there's a campaign for real ale that says, you know, we don't want this, uh, <laughs> this kind of fizzy stuff. I think there's going to have to be campaigns for real humanity, you know, that we think, actually, you know, you know what? I think this old-fashioned Mark I homo sapiens, I'm, I'm quite <laughs> satisfied with that. What, what about you, Martin? Yes. No, I completely agree with that. I think we ought to uh, uh, restrain all these developments. We should restrain all these developments um, here on Earth. Um, because we're well adapted to the Earth and uh, we don't want to change it too fast. I agree with that. Uh, and that's why I think it will be the uh, crazy guys on Mars who are away from the regulators and who um, are ill-adapted and have reasons for trying to uh, change their descendants. So I think they will pioneer these things and we should cheer them on, but we should restrain that happening here. <laughs>